What's going on grunts? Randall here at Grunt Proof. Today we're talking about the US Army ECW CS winter clothing system. I've already done a video on it going over the overview, most of the stuff that's included. Be sure to check that out. Today I'm going to talk about the actual implementation of that system. How to use it and wear it in multiple field conditions, all kinds of other scenarios. We're also going to dispel some rumors and myths. Let's get to it. This system has been out for 14 years of my service, so I've gotten very comfortable using it. I used it as a grunt as well as the rest of my service, so I think I have a pretty good amount of experience. One thing to consider with this, when we're talking about winter or cold conditions, my experience will probably differ from other soldiers. However, I am from the Gulf Coast where it's warm all year round. It's hot as hell in the summer. You barely even have to worry about carrying cold weather gear. So if you're looking at implementing this system as a viewpoint of not wanting to freeze your butt off and wanting to be quite comfortable, I might be the dude to help you. We're going to look at this system from the viewpoint of mission planning. There are a few crucial considerations you have to implement into your planning. Number one is, what is the weather like? Is it going to be dry, wet, humid, combination of all? Are we expecting precipitation, snow? And I would say most important of all, what kind of activities are you conducting during your mission? Is this mostly a stagnant mission or is there a lot of sleep involved or is it going to be movement almost the entire time? These are the things we call METTC. It's just what we put into our mission planning. I'm gonna share some of these military insider tips with you guys so you can help implement these into your winter planning. So first let's talk about fall and autumn. We're talking about usually wet, not freezing. Let's start with the footwear. These are your Rocky Intermediate boots. Very comfortable, very tough, excellent boots. Standard OD green, nylon, cotton sock mixture. These both work for me in the summer and all the way down to the cooler months as long as it's not super wet and freezing. Now, when we're talking about it dipping down to almost freezing at night, I'll go ahead and switch to a wool synthetic mixture. These are the darn tough combat wool mixture socks, outstanding socks. So if there's not a lot of movement going on, I will go ahead and throw on the Ninja base weight pants. In the fall and autumn, I will usually throw on the, what I call Ninja top. That goes under the uniform top. A lot of guys think you still have to don the t-shirt over this. That's bullshit. You can look it up in the regulations. For movement and some sitting around, I would usually be good to go. One thing to consider is they level these. So you have layers one through seven. Let me tell you guys right off the bat, this is not a linear system. You don't just progress from one all the way to seven as the weather changes. You're actually going to mix and match the layers. Look guys, I think at least three of the levels I have actually never even touched and we'll get to that. So fall and autumn, when I know it's going to be wet and it might be a little cooler, this is the level six jacket. This is a rain jacket slash slightly warm jacket. You can see the slightly reflective material in there. It is a loud piece of gear. So I usually try to reserve this when it's raining heavily or I'm not too worried about stealth. Very lightweight, very durable, very comfortable. It does breathe slightly. And again, if you are in the field, another thing soldiers screw up, they will put this over this and you do not have to do it that way guys, especially if you're in the field. Once you want to go to this top, you throw away this top, put it away, and you don your level six jacket. And how do you get away with that? Well, the army creates these beautiful little rank systems on all your gear. So you do not have to wear your uniform top. Of course, there's always the possibility of having some bored sergeant major that's never been in the field. How dare They're you? going to try to restrict you on what you can wear. But I'm telling you guys, look at AR670-1, they can add to it, but if it's ridiculous, you actually do have the authority to complain about it through the right channels to get that soft. Otherwise, I'm sorry, your unit sucks. <laughs> Just wait till you move to the next one. And for those who care about the numbering system, once you don the base weight, you are at level one. The base weight or ninja top and bottoms are your level one. So once we get down to freezing and below for most of the day and at night, that's when I'll go ahead and throw on the waffle top on top of my base weight or ninja top. And that's usually how I'll walk around most of the time. All right, if you've guys seen the last video, you know why this is still in the plastic bag, which is getting turned in very soon. But these are your soft shells and your windbreaker. Now, 
unless they are extremely thick like the level seven jacket, I've never been a fan of soft shells. I just don't see the point. It's not gonna keep you dry and it's not gonna keep you warm if the temperature dips. I consider it wasted space and weight. So pants and top, soft shell, those stay in my locker. Now, I mentioned it before, here is the windbreaker. Mine still has the tag on it. It's been locked up for 14 years. I think this thing is an absolute waste of space and time. It does not stop the wind. I don't know why they call it a windbreaker. What it is, is it's a very comfortable jacket and guys think it looks a little bit cooler. You also don't have the patches on there. So all the Delta Force wannabes think they look cooler with it. So in Garrison, you see a lot of the support people wearing these around even in the summertime. But for a field guy, if you actually wanna stay warm, you don't even need this jacket. Because once it starts to get cold, you can go straight to the level six jacket, which actually stops the wind, keeps you warm and dry. So one other item, wasted space and weight. All right, so now we're talking about gloves. Once it starts to get cold, you're gonna wanna wear gloves. So what a lot of soldiers do is sadly, they go buy their own gloves. So these are basic winter gloves. They cost about $20 from clothing sales. These were pretty dang good. You can see I tore the crap out of them over the years and so these would be fine in the cooler months when it starts to get down to freezing so now we're talking about standard issue the army has a winter flyers gloves i don't know if you guys have seen these so the nomex flyers gloves this is those in the winter version pretty dang comfortable pretty warm but they are not waterproof and as with all other army stuff they are designed for movement so if you are in deep freezing conditions just sitting around and you're not from Canada, yeah, these ain't gonna do it. Otherwise, pretty dang good gloves. This is what most guys get issued for the colder months. So you've got your standard issue wool gloves or what they call liners for your black leather work gloves. These are not waterproof. You can waterproof them a little bit with some of the wash or spray stuff and they work pretty well. So combined with the wool inserts and these, you'll actually be good to go. However, once we are talking about freezing conditions and there's not a lot of movement going on, I do one of the best things I've ever figured out. I've talked about it before. So the video is linked up here, go check it out. All right, so freezing conditions, let's talk about footwear. Now I am always wearing a synthetic or cotton wool mixture sock, something nice and warm on my feet that also breathes. These are the Danner Standard Issue Coyote Brown intermediate cold weather boots. Now, what does intermediate cold weather mean? To me, it means it doesn't work. They are slightly warm. There are some inserts that come with them. If you're rucking and moving around, <laughs> they're gonna tear your feet up. So I usually throw those away. Most guys didn't wear them either. They are pretty warm, but check this out. For dealing with wet conditions, this is all suede leather and you cannot waterproof this. It's not water resistant at all. So. If you're walking through any kind of wet foliage, it's raining or you have wet snow, your feet are gonna get wet, you're gonna freeze. These are the Belleville Mountain Combat Boots. You guys have probably seen these in many of my winter videos. These are my favorite freaking boots ever. We were issued these as RFI for Afghanistan. And guess what? This is all I wear in the winter now. Once it gets below freezing, these are freaking outstanding. So they're Gore-Tex, they're well lined, You've got your rubber toe for anything wet down here. And you also have a water resistant, very thick, tough leather. And you can waterproof these to make them even better. So wet snow, wet foliage, your feet won't get wet in these. They'll be, you'll be nice and warm with good socks down to deep freezing temperatures. You will be good to go. All right, so now we're still freezing. So unless you're in garrison and you have a lot of uptight sergeant majors and officers, you are now allowed to walk around with a beanie or what the army calls a watch cap. So this is the black issued one that comes with the new PTs. This is what you're supposed to wear with your uniform. Nice and warm, it's fleece. It's sad that the army got away from the wool hats, but you can just buy your own black wool hat. And as long as it's black, you can wear it in uniform. But look how fluffy and ridiculous this thing is. And how much does it blend into this? You look like a TV freaking bandit breaking into something. So what most soldiers do, Sergeant Majors, watch your feelings on this one. Most guys go down to clothing sales, they buy this $2 Coyote Brown patrol cap from Condor. How dare you? It fits a lot tighter. 
And how does it look against our actual issue uniforms? Now you look like a freaking soldier. So as I said, you can't get away with that in garrison, but guess what? In the field, you gotta do what you gotta do. Once it's freezing and stays there, most guys have this on in the field. Me being a Mississippi boy, I had this on all the time. Not in garrison though. A lot of you guys asked how I slept in the field outside of the cold months. So if we're talking about summer and it just gets a little bit cool at night, and even into the spring, like the cold German spring, I'm rocking the bivy. As I've said many times, I always carry the bivy with me. I don't care what I'm sleeping in, what the weather's like, this bivy is always with me. And once again, I have always said that I usually sleep in my field clothes. If my clothes are outright muddy and just soaked, I will take those layers off. But look guys, in the army in the field, you don't really have time to slip down to your pink underwear and your little rabbit slippers and get comfortable. You have to be ready to get up and get to work pretty quickly. So if it's above 50 to 55 degrees and I have some other snow gear with me, this bivy is basically all I need. Climb up in this thing, maybe throw on a couple layers and I'm usually good to go. Okay, now let's talk about sleeping in very cold and freezing temperatures. So we've got the Gore-Tex bivy and I would go straight to the intermediate cold weather bag. This bag is supposed to be good down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. I strongly disagree with that, but combining these two and sleeping in a lot of your thermal underwear, you will be good to go. One last thing on the sleeping temperatures. A lot of guys ask, well, what about the entire sleep system? Yes, I have slept in the entire MSS in minus 24 Celsius, and I was very good to go. The problem is, it's very hard to fit that stuff in your pack, especially if you are doing combat operations. What a lot of guys do, we have to sacrifice comfort for security or overall weight. But I'll tell you, with the bivy and the intermediate cold weather bag and sleeping in your long johns and other comfort items that you actually can fit into your bag, you're gonna be good to go. Yeah. What I would usually do is if my outer clothing is not soaking wet or very muddy and just uncomfortable to sleep in, I would go ahead and climb into my sleep system that way. So we're talking about the ninja top and bottom, waffle top and bottom, and then I will add these booties on my feet, good to go. I also sleep in my beanie, but check this out. This is the US Army issue FR hoodie, which means flame resistant. So it's got netting up here for breathability, and this thing has some very good coverage on it. As we know, you cannot sleep with your face inside of your sleep system. You're gonna create moisture, which is then going to freeze. You don't want that. So if you're smart, the military bags are not designed to just be able to poke your nose out of. You have a massive head hole. So what a lot of guys do is we cinch that thing down on our shoulders and we just sleep with our heads out completely. You also have to kind of be a little more alert. So if you're tucked up under your sleeping bag, you can't hear a damn thing. This thing is nice and warm. If you're worried about condensation and freezing, you just poke your nose out a little bit. When your nose gets cold, you're gonna wake up, boom. It's also nice and long in the front and the back. So once you throw your waffle top or whatever top right back over it, it's going to stay there and you have coverage. So we throw this on there and we are good to go. Very cold conditions. We're talking about minus 20 Celsius, sleeping outside like this, we're happy. What about when it's freezing? and we're not doing a lot of movement or we have a lot of stagnation. That is when I would usually break out the fleece. Now, the fleece alone, as I have mentioned, is terrible. It's not waterproof, it's not stop the wind at all. You will freeze if this is your outer jacket. Most guys in garrison like to wear this on the outside. It's more comfortable. You got big old pockets down here and you're allowed to do that in the colder months because you've got places to put your patches. But in the field, if this thing is on the outside, you're going to have a bad day. So you can wear the fleece and you can wear it under your level six top and you will be nice and toasty, especially if we are combining it with the base weight stuff or the waffle top. So count those layers, ninja stuff, waffle stuff, fleece, and then we've got the level six jacket, four layers guys, and you should be good to go in freezing temperatures. So. What a smart guy would do is if we start to initiate movement, whatever we're doing, I know I'm gonna be humping up some hills or whatever, this goes in your ruck or your assault bag and you've got three layers. You can move, you're fine. If you start to get too hot, you drop the waffle top and the pants. As soon as you sit down, however, that medium weight top better go back on and if you start to feel a little bit cold and you're still sitting, 
this needs to go back on. Now, if we're talking about extreme cold and it's most likely gonna be dry, then it's about time for me to leave this bad boy at home and then we're going to elevate. That is where the level seven stuff comes in. So my absolute favorite freaking outdoor jacket ever for freezing and dry conditions and some pretty darn freaking badass pants. Now, unless you're in Alaska or way up north in Norway or something, you're probably not gonna be wearing these out in the field during movement. When you're moving, you take these with you, balled up and crammed into your ruck. They actually condense pretty well. Once you stop moving, you throw these on. And believe it or not, you can sleep in almost freezing conditions with these. Matter of fact, I did a video on that. Go check that out. It's pretty interesting. And that is why the Marines call it the happy suit. A lot of times they will actually drop their sleeping system and they will just use this because guess what? It serves two purposes. If you're sitting in the field, say in an OP, or you're just sitting around stagnated, maybe just hanging out doing nothing, well, you've got this stuff to throw on and you're nice and warm. Oh, and guess what? Once you go to sleep, you throw it on again. But you don't need your giant sleep stuff. And I have been in conditions like those in Eastern Germany where it's freezing balls cold all day long, and then we gotta sleep, but we can't carry too much. So I would actually drop the intermediate bag. I would take these with me, did not have these booties yet. When it came time to sleep, I would sleep in my summer or patrol bag and my bivy, and I would throw these on and I would not freeze. This stuff will keep you nice and toasty, guys. All right, guys, so one last tip on the pants. I showed you guys these first light pants. There is a soldier solution to these, and I did it a long time ago. So you can take the standard mid-weight pants, which are the waffle pants. You can, at the thrift store or at the BX, you can actually buy strips of Velcro. So you can take that Velcro, take your waffle bottoms, bring them to the tailor, and you can say, I want my pants cut long ways, and I want Velcro down the side. So you can essentially turn your own mid-weight pants into quick release pants, just like these. But I'll tell you guys the truth about the mid-weight pants. I tried to avoid them as much as possible. I always brought my base layer stuff out with me. And once I put those bottoms on, if there was movement going on, I just, I couldn't even deal with the waffle bottoms. So I almost always left those at home or they would stay in my bag until it was time to sleep. That's one of those things where soldiers are just issued so much equipment, they actually get confused. So I played with it over the years. I was comfortable leaving certain things like the waffle bottoms at home. So when it got really cold at night or I was just sitting around freezing, the ninja bottoms would go on and then I would throw these on real quick. And these also have a zip down the side so you can take them off real quick without having to remove your boots. Very cool. All right, guys, so some last notes on this system. I've heard a lot of people complain about the Army ECWCS system. They say you're still cold, it's too large and clunky and bulky. Let me just address that now. The number one thing with military gear is it has to be tough. It has to be durable. So we're not talking about just field use. Down and anything light is out because what does the soldier do when he comes back from the field? He just wants to get out to the bar and drink. Everything goes into the washer and everything goes into the dryer on high heat. And guess what, guys? The synthetic stuff can actually handle that abuse. Another crucial factor, military stuff has to be built with use in mind. So when people complain about the gloves, as I said, these winter Nomex gloves, they will not keep your hands from freezing when you're just sitting around. But the Army purchased these with two things in mind. You should be moving with these on, so you need some breathability and your hands aren't gonna freeze with the movement. Number two, you also still have to maintain some dexterity. Mittens are great and all, but you cannot do anything with them and you have to open these to get dexterity. And I know guys, we'll talk about the mittens with the little trigger finger and all that. Well, guess what guys, that defeats the purpose of the mittens. So if you got your finger just hanging out there in the wind, what's the point in having the mitten in the first place? You might as well go back to these so you can actually move your whole freaking hand. All these trigger finger mitten guys, watch them try to do stuff in the field with their mittens on. They can't do anything intricate. All they can do is shoot. They can't reload, they can't charge, they can't correct a malfunction. They always have to take their gloves off. So I would actually say these are the best gloves if you're actually doing stuff in the field. 
and you carry these with you with your wool liners and you have something extra to throw on. So another complaint about military surplus stuff, especially with this newer ECWCS stuff, such as the level six jacket. Guys are like, that crap is way too expensive and I can't find the right size. And look guys, if you want to buy this stuff, you're gonna have to realize one thing. You can mix and match all this stuff. You can mix generation two with generation three and you can actually go backward and the things work a lot better. If you're not in the military, you don't have to care about everything matching. In my cabin up in the mountains, I have some of the old ACU or UCP pattern stuff and sometimes I'll wear it with DCU stuff. Why? Because I don't freaking care. I'm retired and I don't have a sergeant major on my back anymore. So I know a lot of you guys want to try to get the right uniform and everything, but don't worry about that. If you're looking for a jacket, get the freaking jacket you can find. So that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And guess what? This is going to be the last freaking video I do on this stuff because tomorrow I am turning this all in. I've already got my retirement papers, but this is the last deed I have to complete. And if you served, you know how much of a pain in the butt CIF is. But hey, guess what? Doesn't matter because I already got my first couple retirement checks. So jokes on them. All I got to do is show up, dump this crap, make sure I don't owe them anything and I'm freaking done. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you could learn something from my years of mostly painful experience and let me know if you have any questions below. I'm always available. Make sure you like and subscribe and until the next video, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Stay warm, take care of yourselves.